Hi, my name is Paul Nelson with Egger Pumps, based in Juliet, Georgia. And today we're making a maintenance service video for Little Elm to show them just how easy it is to maintain the Egger Pump. So our presentation is gonna have an introduction to Egger, a description of the Toro Pump, an overview, talk about design features, and then we're gonna dive right into the maintenance. Now, Egger manufactures pumps and valves. In fact, the Toro pump is our grid pump, but it's great for sewage and sludge. It's a fully recessed impeller pump. Then we have our EOS, which is a semi-open pump, similar to some of the sewage pumps you use. We have our axial flow pump, high flows, low head. And then we have uh, an innovation called an iris valve, and an iris is a centrally closing orifice. And it's used in the wastewater treatment plant for aeration flow control, and it's state-of-the-art. So moving forward, we designed our first pump in the early 50s, and it was used at a potato factory to pump potato peelings. And you know, the peelings, not only are they difficult to pass, but they get sticky and they stick together. And so they needed a solid handling pump that could pass solids, big solids. So Fast forward in the 70s and 80s with the innovation of AutoCAD, SolidWorks, CFD, we just kept innovating our pump. So we're at the fifth generation right now and gosh darn it, we have the most efficient grid pump on the market where we're twice the efficiency of the leading competitor, which means we're half the horsepower. Now that's what our pump looks like. Typically like this pump is a five inch suction, four inch discharge passes a full three inch non-compressible. See, it's fully recessed outside of the flow stream. So the grit particles come in and get pumped out with minimal contact. And what that means is, see that ball? That's a three inch solid. And see, it's gonna progress through there and pump through. See, we can handle solids, whether it's rags or Swiffers or diapers or prison uniforms, that type of stuff. Uh, you know, we can do stuff. But really, we're a grit pump because only 25, only 15 percent of the flow actually touches the impeller. 85 percent just goes right out. So that impeller sits out side of the flow stream, creates a vortex which induces the flow. That's what we do. That's what it looks like. That's a show pump. It's a cutaway, and this one has 12 veins. The grit pump has eight veins, and it's designed not to wear out. And there's a uh, the impeller is mounted on a shaft of the keyway, and then we have the impeller nut. There's no special tools required, just Allen wrenches. And our impeller can be easily trimmed to meet your exact design condition. This one is a trimmed impeller, and what you'll see is we trim this, but we left the shroud full. The reason why I see that little nub there, well, because we have rear pump-out veins, and those pump-out veins help keep the backside of the pump clean and flushed, so solids don't build up. Now, one of the uh, big important factors is our centered impeller. Every other pump on the market has an offset impeller with a small gap there, progressively getting larger. We can't have that because we sold to you a cantilever pump and we can't have any vibration, okay? So we centered it, which then took our radial loads and made them steady, whether you had 25% flow or up to 150%, you've got good low radial loads. Whereas th those other pumps down here at 25%, you've got like four or five times the radial load and out there. And that's important because the pump that we sold is a cantilever pump. Before we jump into it, have you ever seen a pump that can pump a chain? Simply, we, fill we made a plastic tube, filled it with water. We had to make these little donuts to center the chain because you can't drag it through. And the pressure of the pump pumps it through. And so if I start this video, um, you will see it pumping a chain. So hopefully this comes out and that you can see it. Well, anyways, please don't pump a chain, but if you had to, we can do it. Now, we build a lot of style pumps. We build the horizontal pump, the uh, motor mounted V-belt drive, vertical pumps, but your pump is the SO or vertical cantilever pump. And what that means is you use a standard duty motor, in this case it's an ABB, heavy duty bearing frame, and picture a drive shaft from an F550, super duty, turbo diesel, 
you know, it'd be a big shaft, right? Well, that's what we have because we have a completely unsupported shaft from that bearing point, which is above the liquid, all the way down to that impeller, which could span five feet. Now, we have that big shaft, so that centered impeller, keeping the vibration low, keeping balanced forces, means that we will last a long time in it's good, smooth running pump. Now, you can see the recessed impeller, but there's no bearing here, there's no seal. No shaft sealing, which means no shaft maintenance, no um, seal water, it can run dry indefinitely, no bearings in the pump liquid, which you know what grit does to bearings, and very little maintenance, you'll see. And that's how it's installed with a suction pipe going down. In fact, this is a head cell that we installed our pump on up in New York State. You'll see the standard duty motor with the bearing frame above the liquid, the cantilever section with the pump end. And there's a the liquid level, but we got that 15 foot pipe going to the bottom. You have a 15 foot pipe going to the bottom. And the beauty of it is recessed impeller, no bearings, no seals, can run dry, beautiful. That's what you want, and that is your pump. We built your pump custom because we didn't know if it was gonna be long enough to be submerged, so we actually built a special base plate with this little tub to allow the pump to be mounted down in the tub, giving us another 12 to 18 feet, 18 inches of liquid covering our pump. And then this is called the large pit cover because we included the pipe here that's mounted, so it's nice and rigid and strong. Now. The model is a Toro T, V for hard metal, 61100. The 100 means a four inch discharge, five inch suction. It is a vertical cantilever pump, fully recessed, curved vein vortex impeller design, 25.3% high chrome iron, so it's about 600, 600 Brunel. It's pretty hard, it's gonna last a long time. It's rated for 180 GPM at 12 feet, and we use a five horsepower motor. We're only drawing 1.3 brake horsepower, but you want to be not overloading, okay? That's what it looks like. That's the actual drawing with that tub. It's all special. And see the discharge pipe? And there's a picture of it, right? As we started it up last week. Boy, it was running nice, smooth. And your curve looks like that, the TV61100, 180 GPM, 12 feet ahead, right? It's a five inch suction, four inch discharge. We can have a 9.33 inch diameter impeller, but in this case we went with 7.389, and it can handle a 3.3 inch large solid, solid. And here's a motor data sheet, really just says 460 volt, and it's running at 882 RPM, so it's running slow. In fact, tip speed is what really matters, and that tip speed on that pump is probably 38 feet per second which is so slow, this pump should just last and last and last. And that's a brochure on it, basically shows the installation and such. And there's a, in your own M manual, there's the cr cross section, there's the parts list. Okay, this is the English here. So ignore this two, and just look at the, the number, which is the position, and the designation. So, routine maintenance, there's no bearings, right? So there's no wear due to grit. Well, there are bearings, but it's in the bearing frame, which is above the liquid. No mechanical seals, no flush required, runs dry without damage, no worries. So here's your required maintenance. You gotta grease the motor and the pump bearing every 3,000 hours or at least once a year, okay? And there it is in the operating instruction, it says, Anywhere from 750 to 1,000 RPM, we're at 882 or 900 every 3,000 hours, okay? And that's what it looks like. Now, that was the pump that I showed you before. See those tubes? That corresponds to those two grease fittings. So all you gotta do is go over there and grease it. And then there's a grease fitting on the motor there, and then there's one on the lower bearing on the motor, which is not shown. There you go. That's the maintenance of the pump. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Paul Nelson. I'm with Edgar Toro Pumps based in Juliet, Georgia. And we can be reached at 478-250-9880. Thank you and have a great day.